scripture reading for today is from Psalm 107. It's a very long chapter, and then we're going to just read four verses together. And Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3, and verse 43 together. Hear God's word for us today. Let's read. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Verse 43. Whoever is wise, let him attend to these things. Let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. What are you thankful for? That's a question I want you to think about as we watch a little video clip. <laughs> Wait, we need a camera? So what are we doing? Hi, my name is Michelle, and this is Rebecca. I'm from Madagascar. I'm from the U.S., and I'm really thankful for Rebecca's friendship um, here at OEM, and I'm really thankful for our Hanum small group. They're amazing people, and I've grown so much because of my friends in our small group. So I'm really, really thankful for all of them. Hi, my name is Marcos, and I'm thankful for my church community and my family. Hi, my name is Brandon, and I'm thankful for God's grace in my life. I'm most thankful right now for the North Korean um, small group because they're really cool people. Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm thankful for comfortable chair. I'm thankful for the food we eat. I'm thankful for the world so sweet. I'm thankful for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. <laughs> Hi, my name is David, and one thing I'm very thankful for is Pastor Mike's uh, dry sense of humor <laughs> and OEM. Hi, I <laughs> Hi, I'm Amy, and I'm thankful for Amped. <laughs> I'm Daniel, and I'm thankful for having such a lovely community here uh, when I'm so far from home. And I feel <laughs> like I belong here, so thank you. Hi, my name's Eileen, and I am thankful for the OEM staff because they are awesome. My name is Joanna, and I'm thankful for my Indonesian mission trip team. Hi, my name is Vanessa, and I'm thankful for these cookies and my friends over here. My name's Paul, and I'm thankful for all the people that have come into my life and how God has used them to bless me. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jane, and I'm thankful for all the abundance of food and great cuisine that's available in Korea. And I'm just glad that God gave humans the ability to taste all these different delicious tastes and textures. So uh, eat up! Hi, I'm Richard. I'm really thankful for a wonderful year at OEM. Hello, my name is Esther Hong, and I thank God for having a good family. Hi, I'm Egypt, and I'm thankful for uh, friends away from home and um, church family and everybody. Uh, hello, I'm Victor Choi. I am thankful for my family and good food and, you know, Jesus Christ. Okay. Hi, my name is Eno Ko, and I'm thankful for Living Life, who helps me to do QT every morning. Go Durano. <laughs> uh, my name is Hyeyoung, I'm thankful for OEM, I'm thankful for my friends and family. Hello, my name is Amelie, and uh, I am thankful for my mommy, daddy, and, and Josiah and Bria. My name is Josiah, and I'm thankful for a house to live in and for all the food we get. And this is Bria. Bria, say hi. Say hello. <laughs> I'm thankful for the Lord 
for sending his only son, Jesus Christ, to whom that he has given me new life and made me to be his child and calling me to serve him. And I'm very thankful. And I'm very thankful for so many people that God has blessed me with, my family, but also my staff together that we serve OEM with. And uh, I know they have to come early in the morning to a prayer meeting and they have to do a lot of things because of me. But, you know, I'm very thankful to be able to really serve you together. And I'm very thankful for all of you. Now, OEM, I don't know why you're here. I don't know why I'm here. But I'm so glad that God has brought us here, that he allows us to be together. Uh, for such a time as this, I don't know what he's planning and thinking, but I hope that together we will serve God and God's purpose. And I'm very thankful for all of you, and I'm very excited for what the Lord has in store for us. Thanksgiving. American Thanksgiving is next Thursday. No, not next Thursday. Thursday after, the fourth Thursday in November. And Canadian Thanksgiving is uh, second Monday of October. And Korean Thanksgiving changes because uh, they go with a lunar <laughs> calendar. Uh, but Thanksgiving, especially when I think back of uh, uh, times in America, is a time where we come together and then eat a lot. It's usually a turkey day, right? And then we bake turkey and then eat for many, many, many days. And it has become a family day where people come together, just uh, 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 relax and connect together and then have good time together. But during the Thanksgiving time, usually we go around and ask, what are you thankful for? And then people go around and sharing, I'm very thankful for this and that. Sometimes uh, I hear people say, oh, I'm thankful that I got a job, been without a job for some time. I'm very thankful that my kid went to college and then my daughter actually graduated. I'm thankful that, you know, my son's doing well. I'm thankful for this and that. And then many times, Thanksgiving, which is rightfully so, but it's focused on the things through which that how God has blessed us, gifts that God has given us, and then we recognize it's from God, and just we say thank you. But sometimes when we focus on thanksgiving, on the things when the ear is not so good, when you're ill or when you're having some tough time, we hesitate to give thanks. Well, I guess I will thank God. Maybe the next year will be better. Or sometimes as we are thanking God for different things inside, but I don't have what I really want. And then we tend to focus on the things that we do not have than the things that we do have, or that could very easily shift to becoming an envy. How is it that he has it that I don't? How is it that he gets a promotion that I don't? How is it that he's married and I am not? And so forth and so on. Well, I don't know what you're thankful for. I hope that as you are spending this Thanksgiving season, we get to go to the base and then have a Thanksgiving dinner next Sunday too. And then I hope that you will have a Thanksgiving, not just focusing on the things with which that God has blessed you with, but that I hope that you will take time to thank the Lord so that you will say thanks and be able to worship the giver of so many good things that he has blessed you with. The passage that we read together, it starts out, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his love endures forever. But then last verse ends like this. Whoever is wise, let him attend to these things. If you're wise, think about this. Let him consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Don't just focus on the things, how things are going well and what you got. But think about God's unfailing, steadfast love for you as you spend this Thanksgiving together. I want to think about three things together. His loving commitment for you. And then his merciful deliverance. And then his gracious intent of what he is doing doing in and through your life. Let's look at the first thing for his loving commitment. Verse 1, it reads like this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good 
and his steadfast love endures forever. In fact, we sing about this a lot. In fact, this is a call to worship or profession of faith. To those that do have faith in Jesus and to those that know God, and then we are called upon to give God thanks because he is good. And then his loving kindness, steadfast love endures forever. You know that God is good God. He is good and everything that he makes is good and then he makes even the broken things good. And then we know that even Jesus said, even you being evil know how to give good things, how much more the heavenly father will he not give good things and give you Holy Spirit. And then James 1 also speaks about every good and perfect gift comes from the father and that's what we know. But not just thinking about God who is good to you, but the next phrase, next word, really captures an important meaning for us. The steadfast love or undying love, unending love that lasts forever. And that's what Psalmist reminds us of. What is this? Steadfast love, undying love, great love and loving kindness that's translated into many different words. It's talking about love that God has for you because he has a very special relationship together with you because he is your covenant God and Father to you and because he is your God, your Father, he is faithful to you, and he speaks about his faithful, loyal love. Covenant in the Bible, Old Testament, is talking about how two parties become one when they come together, kind of like marriage, when a groom and a bride come together and say their vow, pledge to one another, and then after the ceremony, they become one. Covenant making is something like that. When the, a, a bigger, stronger body and then lesser body come together, and then they make a covenant and they become united as one. In the Old Testament, there are many passages that has uh, alluring and then mentioning of how God's relationship together with Israel is a covenant relationship with God. It's like this. You all know about Ten Commandments, but did you know that Ten Commandments is part of covenant document, sort of? You see, right around covenant, uh, Ten Commandments, you know, these are the, the things that which is usually involved in making a covenant in Old Testament times. Preamble, introduction of who you are, and then historical prologue, how we have come to this point to make this covenant, and general principle of what's going to happen between the two, and specific stipulation as what they need to do, and then witness, and then curses if they do not do it, and blessing if they do it. Preamble. God starts out saying, I am the Lord. And that's how he introduces himself. Prologue, historical prologue. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage? And then general principle, you shall be my people and I shall be your God. Do not have any other gods before me. And that's the part of becoming one. Specific stipulation, 10 things. Do not have anything else. Do not have idol. And then honor my name. And those things are requirements of being God's people. And then witness and curse. If you do not abide by that, there will be a curse. But then there is going to be a blessing to a thousand generation if you continue to be faithful to me i will be faithful to you and bless you the term that describes faithfulness of that covenant faithfulness is this word hesed hesed somebody that is faithful as a wife or a husband as a father faithfulness that is described is this word hesed Steadfast love, unending love, love 
that goes on everlasting love. Now, God loves you and me because of the work that Jesus has done and because of what he has done to purchase you and make you and me to be his and his children. God approaches to us as loving Father, and then he has this faithful love. And he is going to be faithful to you because he is faithful God that he is. You know, whenever we have a, a communion, uh, when Jesus said, this blood is not just the blood, cup of forgiveness of sin. No, he says, this cup is a cup of new covenant. In the Old Testament, when people said, yes, we want to serve you and we, be, we want to be your people, and Moses sprinkled the blood, and then together with the sprinkling of the blood, they cut the covenant and they became one. But Jesus' blood now sort of sign in blood that your relationship with God is that of your relationship that belong to God and he your God and he your father. God is faithful to you because you are his. God paid the price to make you his. So his faithful love will not change depending on what you do. Here, loving kindness endures forever. You know, Psalm 107 is part of a, a trilogy of Thanksgiving Psalm. Psalm 105 speaks about how God has given promise to Abraham and how that was fulfilled when God brought Israel people into the land, a promised land. See, God must have been telling Abraham, Abraham, come here, come here, look. It's been about 400 some years. Look, look, look. My promise to you, I know it didn't come through right away, but after 400 some years, it is being fulfilled. You didn't like it because it didn't come right away, but my word and my promise, I told you I'm faithful to you, and there they are. Psalm 106 is talking about how Israel, as God's people, lived a life of rebellion and sinned against God, continued to provoke him to anger, and how God was continuously embracing them and loving them and forgiving them and were faithful to them even when they were unfaithful. Psalm 107 that we read is after God had to scatter people into the Babylonia. And then now God is restoring them again and giving them a new life altogether because his love did not just expire when people disobeyed, but his love continued and then longer than the judgment, and longer than the period of time that he had to wait. Now God is bringing them back again and then renewing them because he is faithful God. If you think about next year, 2016 Thanksgiving, what will we be thankful for? I don't know. But one thing that I know is his loving kindness will be constant. And then he will be together with you, loving you faithfully. Remember John, <clears throat> Psalm 23, his goodness and loving kindness will follow you all the days of your life because you became his, because you are his. Remember the covenant faithfulness of God. Second thing that we want to think together is this, his merciful deliverance. Verse 2 goes like this. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
if we look around, and there are many different things that could describe who you are and who we are. You may be a very intelligent person, rich person, a person that does a lot of good work for other people or serve at church. But one thing that characterizes us all is that we are people that are redeemed by God and by God's grace and mercy. We couldn't make it on our own. We found ourselves in a trouble because of sin. But God came near and rescued us and redeemed us. And that's our story, and I'm sticking to it. And it's because of Jesus that redeemed me. I am here, and I have eternal life and hope. Here, the Bible says, let the redeemed say so. Don't just keep it to yourself. Say it. And say, it is the Lord that redeemed me. It is the Lord that gave me a new purpose. It's the Lord now using me to do the things that I couldn't do. It's the Lord that turned my life around. Say it and say it so that others will come to know it. The redeemed. God purchasing you and winning you to become his. You know, Next section, from verse 4 to 42, no, uh, 4 to 32, gives four pictures of the kind of people that God redeemed. Kind of like testimony, how Anja gave her, her testimony. Testimonies of these sort. Listen to these and see if these tell your testimony. Verses 4. 2, 9, it speaks about, verse 4, Some wandered in desert waste, and finding no way to a city to dwell in, and hunger and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Some of us were lost. We wanted what was best for us, and happiness, and seeking for it, but we got lost, and then we were wandering, and then we were hungering and thirsty to the point that our soul was fainting. But then, when they cry to the Lord, God, help me. God, I don't know what to do. I need you. And then God came and delivered them. God delivered them, gave them a straight way to the happiest place and to heaven a city to dwell in and satisfying their souls through his grace and mercy. And then what does he require of these people that are redeemed? He says, let these people thank God for his steadfast, unfailing love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. This may be a story for some of you, not knowing what, living a meaningless life, Jesus came. And when he met you, gave you a new purpose, reason to live, and this is my story and some of our story. Second story, in verse 10, it goes, Some sat in the darkness and the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and iron, and they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High, and then they were in prison. Some of us, because we wanted to do whatever we wanted to do, especially playing with sin, and then enjoying the pleasure a little bit and then become addicted to it and become imprisoned by it. Sometimes imprisoned by lust, pride, ambition, or whatever it may be. Here the picture is people that are imprisoned. People that are imprisoned now come to a point, God, I just don't have power over these things that keep controlling me and to the point that I'm going to die. God have mercy. And God comes through and cuts them free and break them free from the bondage and then help them to experience the freedom. This is some of your story struggling with addiction or struggling with uh, uh, drinking or whatever it may be. But it is through Jesus Christ who came and set you free. You know that his grace that brought you this point. And you're saying, yes, it is him. 
that gave me life. Other story, third story, it goes like this. Some went, verse 14, some are fools to which that there are sinful ways because of iniquity, suffer affliction. They load any kind of food and they drew near to the gates of death and they cried out to trouble. And you know, the third person, the first one, lost. And second one, imprisoned. Third one, sick to the point of death. Sick to the point of death. And because they thought, hey, I want to do my thing. I do not want to acknowledge God, and I want to just do my thing. And they found themselves the consequences of sin rather than making them full of joy and life and making them more and more and more under the influence of death to the point of death. But when they cried out to the Lord, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. God brought them healing. But what does he require to these people that he healed? God says here, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, this grace, that love that came through and set them free and give them life again for this wondrous works to the children of men. But verse 22, let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. It, interesting thing here. Not just come before God and then give him thanks, but here, bring the gift of thanksgiving offering unto the Lord. Interesting thing about Thanksgiving offering is it's not just the offering that you bring and give and everything is all given to God. No, it's an offering that you give and first offer to the Lord and some parts are given to uh, the priest uh, for them to enjoy and then rest. They turn right back and then invite the family and friends to come. Let's celebrate. What's the occasion? It's God out of his mercy gave me a child. It's God out of his grace came through and gave me a reason to live. It's God out of his mercy has done this again. Thanksgiving offering together with others, sharing about his goodness. And then perhaps you during this Thanksgiving season buy a meal for other people. And what's the occasion? It's because God's so good to me whatever that may be. One more picture here. Some went down to the sea in ship, verse 23, doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord and wondrous works in the deep, and he commanded and raised a stormy wind which lifted up the waves of the sea. These people are adventuresome, overconfident. I want to do what I want to do, and they were setting out in sail. With the spirit of adventuresome. But then what happened was in the sea, God brought about storm. Just like how God brought about storm to Jonah who wanted to go his way. He said, no, you cannot have happiness apart from me. You need to come to me because you are my child. And then people that had such courage here, Verse 26, their courage melted away in their evil plight. But then in the midst of that situation where they just, just were at their wit's end, didn't know just what to do, what do I do, and turned to God, God came through and then quieted, the, still the storm and hushed the waves and then quietly led them to the place where God is leading them to. Some of you have this story. You were in deep trouble. And then you were in the midst of a storm that was way above what you can do. But when you came, God, what do I do? Help me. And God came through and then restored you and brought you a place where you can now call him God, your father, and worship. These four pictures. 
Aren't they the pictures that tells us, remind us about how God redeemed you and me? He is Redeemer. He is Redeemer. The reason why you and I are here is because when we cry out to God, God, I don't have anything to bring to you, nothing to offer, but God came near, accepted us, renewed us, and then made us to be His. Let the redeemed of the Lord, don't just keep it inside, Say so. Say so to God. God, it is you that made me your child and brought me this far. It is you. But together with thank offering, tell others. But one more, tell the leaders of others so that together we will worship God who is faithful who loves and who is ever-present together with us. God who gave his one and only son because he is blinded by his love for people like you and me. We want to consider his steadfast love that never ends because he's faithful to you. And we want to also think about how he has redeemed you and me. But there is one more thing that we want to think together, and that is God's good intention of what he is doing in your life right now. You know, the later passage, passage verse 33 and down, gives another picture of not a person that needed to be redeemed, but picture of God. Picture of God who is powerful because he's able to turn and the river into a desert, spring of water into a, a, a thirsty ground. But he, and then he's able to take the fruitful land into a salty waste when people sin. Just because everything looks good and going well for you doesn't mean that it's going to be forever especially when God comes near and brings judgment. But he also, verse 35, turns desert into pools of water, parched land into springs of water. And then there, and then he will establish a city that will last. Our God is powerful enough to turn things around where there is no way he will make a way. And then he is able to do all this. As I was thinking about this, I couldn't help but to picture, you know, the, the picture of Jesus as we are studying the book of John. You see, in the book of John, the reason why John is written is so that as we come to know Jesus, that Jesus gives us life and we will have that abundant life that he gives some of the pictures of who Jesus is. Remember the person that were lost? And Jesus comes as a shepherd and now gives us satisfaction in our hearts. And Jesus comes and says, I am the bread. And he gives us his truth so that we can find strength to go on. To those uh, that are uh, In prison, Jesus says, I will set you free. And then he sets us free. To those uh, that were fools that were at the near deathbed. Remember a couple of Sundays ago when Pastor Mike preached about the official son? And Jesus gave a word. Go, your son will live. And then when the word was accepted, he began to live. Jesus' word brings life. And the storm. In a couple of weeks, we're going to look at when Jesus came to the storm, Jesus stood, storm, be still. And then waves and then water subsided. This all pictures and points to Jesus who is our Redeemer. And even when our lives have nothing going on, we are so barren, 
when we come to know him, he begins to bless us, gives us bounty. And I have come that you may have life and life abundantly. And that's what he does, and that's what we see here. Verse 34, 37, it says, They saw fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. By his blessing, they multiply greatly, and he does not let their livestock diminish. These people, as they come, and now Jesus leading them, as they learn to plant a litter, seeds of righteousness, words of obedience, walking together with God and living together as God's people. God is blessing it. And it's beginning to grow so that they will be able to enjoy the fruit. But not just beginning to enjoy the fruit, but verse 39, when God blesses, it begins to multiply. This is a picture. When we walk in obedience and walk in righteousness, begin to live for the Lord and serve Him and invest in eternal kingdom expansion. The little that we do, God allows it to grow and bear fruit. But then He blesses and it multiplies. And that is what he has in mind, the purpose with which that he is at work together with you now. We looked at three things. His commitment to you. There is nothing that will last longer than his love. Nothing that's greater. It's not judgment that lasts long. His grace Loving kindness longer and his purpose and then his direction attitude towards you is that of faithful love. And then he has thus far redeemed you, but even in your difficult situation now, when you turn to him, he will redeem you because of his faithful love. And he is even now at work together with you as you learn to walk with him step by step and then he will see that you grow bear fruit but then he will bless and make it abundant and that's what this passage speak about as you think about his loving kindness steadfast love unending love how do we need to respond? How should we respond in this Thanksgiving season? At least a few things. One, at least you should begin to learn to thank God. Come before God and thank God with small things, one by one by one by one. As you begin to say, not just eh, somebody else will thank no, as you begin to say, God, thank you for this friendship. Thank you for the church. Thank you for a small group. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what you begin to do? See, experience, you begin to see in small things God's hand that was at work. And as you begin to see God's hand that was all around you, you begin to see God's presence. And then as you begin to see God's presence, you begin to again see God's steadfast love towards you. But also, thank the Lord as you thank other people. Buy somebody lunch and dinner and then treat that person because God has blessed you. And why don't you also tell them about how God has blessed you. Another thing that we can think about is this Stephas love speaks about God's faithfulness to you. But shouldn't it also remind you to be faithful to God? Rather than saying, God, you better be faithful to me. You promise, you promise, you promise. But what about 
you and me and our part? Are we learning to love God with all our hearts? Are we learning to obey and serve Him? Let's also learn to grow in our faithfulness toward Him. One more thing, and can we learn to work for Him and invest little for His kingdom? As you take time to invest in teaching Sunday school or youth group, or as you learn to share about God's grace, or as you learn to obey and say yes and yes and yes, see how God allows it to grow and bear fruit, and see how God blesses it and multiply. Why don't you do what God is whispering you to do? It's time that you join small group. It's time that you learn to volunteer. It's time that you make time, whatever it may be, say yes. And then sow that seed of righteousness so that next year that you will see the fruit and give God the glory. A gentleman named Bruce Hunt was a missionary in Korea near Busan area, known as a Han Busan Songjusanim. And then while he was serving in Busan area many, many years ago during Japanese <coughs> occupation, one time that he was taken to prison, in prison because he refused to bow before the Shinto shrine. And then when he was thrown into the, the prison, and then he was not comfortable. And then he was talking to God, God, why am I here? I came all the way from the States to, to share about you and serve you. I have faithfully been doing it for so many years. What am I doing here in this uncomfortable and difficult place? And what am I doing, God? You got to treat better than this. And then especially when the food that he was eating was just a rice ball, a couple rice ball a day. He was a pretty tall gentleman when I met him. He was about 6'5", and he was a pretty big person. And then... Each day when he was saying, man, what's going on here? Why am I here in this prison in Korea? But one day as he was praying, complaining before the Lord, God, this is not right. God, what's going on? God, you got to treat me right? Sort of. And the next day, he found an answer to his prayer. The next day, when the food came, the rice ball, small rice ball came with a topping on top, with a topping of bean sprout head, one small bean sprout head. And on a small rice ball, small topping, and that reminded him. God, you were listening to my prayer. God, you care about me. God, you are with me. God, I am, un un I am unworthy servant. He said he couldn't eat that rice ball for many days because that little, little tapping of bean sprout head reminded him of God's steadfast love that was evident in his life. Whoever is wise, let him attend to these things. Let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Let us pray. Could you just take time and just 
thinking about the message, what God's Spirit may be whispering to you, just respond. Or if you want to just take time to just thank Him one by one, would you just take short time to do that? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have come and through your blood and death and made us to be yours, forever yours. There is nothing that separates from your love because of what you have done and then you through your blood and signed in blood that I belong to you and adopted as the child of the living God forever. God, we thank you. God, we pray that as we spend this Thanksgiving season, that may we be people not unwise, but more wise mm -hmm. and beginning to see your love, your purpose, your work in and through our lives so that many more next year will stand together with me and us giving you thanks and worshiping you. Use us, O oh Lord God. We thank you as a church that you have blessed us in so many ways. But Lord, we want to be able to say yes to what you want to do and we want to begin to sow the seeds of righteousness so that through us and through our obedience, we want to bear fruits of righteousness and we want to be a, a blessing in the city. God, have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' name.